Hello and happy Thursday. I'm Diana Kennedy, your host for the iHomeschool Network, iHomeschool Hangouts. You'll find us here each and every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, noon Mountain Time, and 11 a.m. for the folks on the Pacific Coast. You'll find us here with the bloggers of IHN, sometimes with special guests where we discuss topics that relate to homeschooling families as well as just family, family management. You can follow us here on Google+, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on iTunes or on Stitcher, and uh, watch us at your convenience. <clears throat> um, we are going to be talking today about um, homeschool burnout, which I think is a pretty timely topic for us here in February. We're getting, we're getting to some of the long, lazy winter days, and I don't know about you guys, but I don't really have a whole lot of motivation for school right now. <laughs> so I'll introduce my panel, and then if you've got questions, if you want to throw them up in the event page over on Google+, Plus, we'll try to get to them um, as we can, and we are looking forward to spending the afternoon with you. Heidi? Mute didn't want to work. Sorry, ladies. Um, hi, I'm Heidi. It's uh, great to be here again. You can find me blogging over at uh, startsedate.com, which is my personal blog. I am also a contribu contributor over at Hip Homeschool Moms, where you can find me writing once a month and uh, hanging out on social media once a week as well. And uh, happy to be here. Awesome. For those of you who watch us frequently, Heidi's a frequent guest. All right, new to the panel today for us, and I'm so glad to have her here, is Kendra Fletcher. Kendra, if you'll introduce yourself and let folks know where they can find you, please. Sure. I'm Kendra Fletcher, and I'm currently blogging and podcasting at homeschoolingirl.com and have been writing at Preschoolers in Peace for many, many years, but have worked myself out of that job. <laughs> My youngest is five, and um, kind of here, there, and everywhere, writing. Love it. Wonderful. Thanks for being here with us today. LaToya? Hey, everyone. I'm LaToya. I blog at LaToyaEdwards.net, and I am that crazy single homeschooling mom of two boys, and boy, do I have a lot to say about burnout. That's exactly <laughs> where I'm at these days. Awesome. Thank you. Marianne, Marianne is a new panel guest with us today. If you will introduce yourself and tell folks where they can find you, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Marianne Sunderland. I've been homeschooling for, this is our 18th year. So um, I've had a lot of experience with burnout, but also a lot of years, obviously, of overcoming it. Um, and I blog at Abundant Life, but the URL is MarianneSunderland.com. Wonderful. Thank you. That's, uh, I wanted to throw out there to the people that are watching and listening. Um, we're going to talk about um, ways to avoid burnout, kind of some um, symptoms, tips, all kinds of stuff here. Um, my production manager, Marlene Griffith. Hey guys, uh, happy to be back. I'm Marlene Griffith. I blog at adiligentheart.com and I'm going to be pulling in your comments from the event room. Look forward to this hangout. Marlene is my right-hand girl and helps me run everything smoothly behind the scenes so that this will be a good experience for you guys. Sam? Hi, guys. I'm Sam Kelly. I vlog over at Sam's Noggin, and I talk about faith, family, homeschooling, and fitness. Right now, I'm not saying a lot because we're all going crazy with construction after the big Arctic freeze and uh, some broken water pipes. So we're having some major burnout right now with chaos in our house. Thanks for joining us today, Sam. I'm Diana Kennedy, and when I'm not representing the iHomeschool Network, you can find me at thekennedyadventures.com, where I share Catholic homeschooling resources, um, tips, um, how to mismanage your homeschool, as well as your large family. I'm the soon-to-be mother of six. Um, we'll be expecting this next baby in about six weeks, and... I think that's about. I think that's about all about me. <laughs> I got distracted thinking about a due date. <laughs> all right, but let's talk about um, homeschool burnout today. When we talked, we we went through and brainstormed topics. Um, 
kind of together with um, our production team and then also with the bloggers of, I, of, of IHN and homeschool burnout um, and self-care uh, was something that came up quite a bit. So um, we're going to talk about, like today, I don't want to do a whole lot of, um, I guess wallowing is a bad word, I don't want to talk too much about I want to keep it brief on burnout stories. I want to I want to be more helpful than anything to everybody. Um, just to let people know that this is a common common phenomena. Um, how to avoid it? Kind of what we do. Um, how to get through the other side? And these girls that are here with me today um, have only been homeschooling for about three years. So the girls that are with me today um, have a lot more experience and are coming from some, from some different perspectives than I am. So I'm hoping that this is going to be incredibly helpful for you guys today. So I think we're going to start off. Um, let's talk about um, what are the root causes of burnout. Um, what what are we doing as moms? Um, to kind of, I think a lot of us on this panel, I'm counting, I know at least three or four of us are super type A and uh, that probably contributes a lot um, to getting uh, over scheduled and having just too much on our plate. So let's talk about um, kind of what we can, what what are the causes of burnout? Where, where, does, where does this start? Where does this come from? Who wants to start tackling that for me? I can go. For us in the past, I think that homeschool burnout has been mainly because of trying to have too much on our plates for fear of not stacking up to our public school competitor. <laughs> um, you know, not not just sticking with the basics um, and type A scheduling. Um, what works for me doesn't work necessarily for all of my children and with six, um, Somebody is going to be burnt out at some point because of high expectations, um, forcing through with curricula that maybe didn't fit our needs or they weren't interested in once we got into it. This has been the first year that we weren't feeling as much burnout with the curriculum aspect. It was just our home life that we've turned the corner and wanted to run away. Um, I'm kind of scared about the rest of the school year because we've lost a few weeks now because of not being able to have a house. So um, I know that we can push through the burnout because we've been off, but I'm not liking the crunch of we have time to make up for and then we're moving this summer. So we have a lot on our plate right now. But, but in years past, it's been because of too much that we didn't enjoy doing and too much of a type A schedule. I'm glad that you brought that up. That it could be that it could be as as a result of curriculum or the season of your life. Um, right now, I know we're terribly behind. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I've been honest all year. We, we, we the wheels have come off the bus, you know, a long time ago. Um, so we're just kind of cruising along, but. Um, I know that we'll plan just basically to do, do school through to, through to the summer. It's just it's just not gonna it's not gonna be something that we're gonna be able to avoid because I don't want to cram things in just for the sake of getting it done on a checklist. Uh, I want to make sure that we cover cover material and cover it well. It's just gonna have to be a slower pace for us, and that's just that's just the way it's gonna be. Um, but that's important to remember that you've got you've got a kind of few different factors that contribute, um, like we talked about. Things that are going on in your lives, um, a move, a new baby, um, death in the family. I mean, all kinds of things can contribute to that, um, as well as choices that we possibly have made as moms that maybe weren't so good for us, for everybody. To admit we're not perfect. I'm waiting for Kendra to share some of her expertise because she's done this. <laughs> she and Marlene have done this for quite a while. Uh, well, I'm I'm happy to share. What I was you were kind of breaking out a little bit for me, Diana. So I'm not sure exactly what the last thing you said was, but um, 
one thing I noticed a couple of years ago because I feel like I've been in burnout for about five years. <laughs> we have eight children and we've got um, two in their college years and you know it's just it's just a three ring circus around here. Um, but one thing I noticed a few years ago was that my husband was hitting his dental practice burnout about the same time I was hitting homeschool burnout. And that was really good for me to, to watch because it, it made me think that probably 15 years or so into any career, there's a, you hit a bump of sort of like, oh, this is it. <laughs> this is as exciting as it gets, you know. And so um, sort of watching him go through that made me realize that it wasn't, this wasn't a red flag. It wasn't like, oh goodness, I'm doing something wrong or, or maybe we should stop homeschooling or whatever it was, but it was just, just the knowledge that I was mid-career and maybe I needed to change some things for myself um, get some renewed inspiration or sort of switch gears and do things maybe a little more simply or take some things off my plate or get help, you know, or whatever that was going to make the next 15 years really flow smoothly um, if we were indeed going to continue for another 15 years. So I don't know how helpful that is to anybody else, but it, it was a real eye-opener for me to realize that um, 15 years into any career, I think you hit a wall a little bit so maybe maybe your burnout isn't symptomatic of wrong choices maybe it's just because you've been doing it for a while and you're tired that's a great point because as I as I listen to you um, I'm thinking about um, last year marked my 20th year as a nurse and <laughs> um, I tell people a lot um, that uh, it's a paycheck for me now. It used to be. It used to be my career, and a lot of what um, my self-esteem came from came came from my job. Um, if I if I was doing a good job at work, then all right, uh, everything everything was is was going well in my life. But as I've gotten older and I've gotten gotten more comfortable and done, like you said, done this longer. I'm like, no, I'm just there. You won't see me signing up for extra committees or <laughs> volunteer projects or any of that. I'm like, no, see ya. <laughs> punch in, punch out, goodbye. Because my my life is at home. And that's something yeah. to remember as a mother is that um, you don't get evaluations <laughs> from your children or from your husband like you do like you do at a job, you know, a, a, a punch the clock kind of job. You know, I'm not getting I'm not getting some kind of accolades or rewards at home, um, not physically. Um, you know, later on down later on down the line, obviously, you know, you you've got moments from your kids that that matter more than anything. But um, so yeah, that's a great. I'm so glad you brought that up because that was something that that I never even thought of. So that's awesome. All right, well, let's talk about um, is this inevitable? Like, does everybody? Because I'm going to look at some of our our younger homeschool moms too, younger meaning not quite as haven't done this quite as long. Is it inevitable? Like, does everybody go through this, or is it just something that happens to some of us and maybe not to others? What do you guys think? Given that I have it something happened. to say about that. Oh, did I step on someone? Sorry. Oh. Go ahead, Heidi. No. Um. No, I'll go just real quick. Um, I was going to say I want to hope that it happens to almost everyone because I know that it happens to me. Um, and I have a very type A style, Diana will attest to. Um, so I think sometimes I do bring it on myself. And um, I, we also have a lot of friends who are much more unschooly, you know, much more laid back and relaxed. But I do find that they come to a point too where I, it's almost like a reevaluation period. Like, you're doing something and suddenly it's like, well, we loved this for a while, but maybe something has changed and it's just not working for us anymore. So I, I almost want to say that, yeah, I think that everybody goes through a period and the burnout, I feel like, is more an evaluation period of, yeah, maybe this was working, but now it's not and it's time to figure out something else that's going to work better. That's a great point and something I hadn't thought about. I, I think we sort of brought, we kind of touched on that when, when Sam was talking. Um, 
it's and I wanted to kind of capitalize on that. It's okay. It's okay to say, um, you know, I hate that I spent this amount of money on this curriculum, but it's just not working for us. Or um, soccer mm, in the winter, not a good idea. Or you know, whatever. It's so it's okay. I like that that aspect of it, Heidi, is to look at it as a reevaluation instead of oh my gosh, this is a total failure. It just it just didn't work, and that's okay, you know, and go with it like that. Marla, uh, Mary Ann, what did you have to add in? Well, I just, you know, when I think of homeschool burnout, I think of it as really coming from a lack of balance in some area or many areas at home. And a lot of us have come out of the public school system where we feel like, school ha looks a certain way and so we try to recreate that at home from one degree to another whether we adopt a certain style or not we still have these checklists that we feel whatever they may be need to be done for our family or our homeschool and I think um, burnout is a natural process of saying oops that's not working um, what what are my priorities where where what can I cut and what do I keep? Like, for example, in our family, grammar used to kill me, and our younger kids could not grasp grammar concepts, say. And I would, I remember so clearly being so stressed because my second grader couldn't remember nouns and verbs. And then the third grade curriculum comes, and they're teaching nouns and verbs. And I'm like, light bulb, you know, now, now remember, I've been homeschooling for a long time. Uh, we don't teach grammar till junior high. So, you know, I think it's a process of, of burning out and saying this isn't working and as you get older or you've been doing it longer you real you, you don't get to full burnout because you see the signs coming and you go oh wait a second let me stop and reprioritize so having having you know backing way up I think you need to have your family priorities your family goals in mind you know but yeah I think um, homeschool burnout is definitely totally natural um, and it's it's a catalyst to change that's a great tip, and I I want to I want to kind of just just say that again for the people, um, <laughs> for the folks of us that are kind of on the younger end of homeschooling, you know where we haven't been doing it quite so long. Um, that's awesome, and I I love to hear that from you. That maybe next year, you know, I won't feel like I'm herding cats when I'm trying to teach all these littles because you know nobody. I can't get them to cooperate at the same time or whatever. Um, so that, that makes me feel better to, to look at you. And even, I mean, even just with three years in, you know, I've listened to some wise people when they told me that I had too much going on. And I was like, oh, no, um, I can do that. I can do all of that. And then you realize when you get in, you're like, yeah. There's not a day on that calendar that doesn't have something written on it. That's not a good thing for anybody. I mean, even I mean, we're my luckily, well, maybe not so luckily. I'm an extrovert, obviously. All of my children are too. So yeah, they'll just go, 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 go until somebody breaks. And um, usually it's not them. <laughs> it's usually me that comes unglued completely. So um, yes, I love that. Thank you so much, Marianne. And kind of what as we're as we're talking about that. Do, do your kids experience burnout? Do you see stuff? Do you see signs from them that they're just kind of over things? And my kids do, especially my oldest son. Um, and a lot of that is with his sensory needs and special needs and things. I can tell when he has had enough because he, you know, every little thing will set him off. You know, behavior kind of becomes a constant problem. You know, everybody has an attitude about school, which for my kids is odd because they will actually get mad at me if we take too much of a break. You know, my kids are the ones who are like, Mom, you know, we didn't do school at all last week. Like, can we do some schoolwork today? And I'm like, uh, no, we're on summer break. Like, go outside. Um, so when I see my kids, you know, not wanting to do schoolwork and everything, having an, ad like, an attitude about everything, um, I can tell that they have kind of had enough. And a lot of what I have figured out now is a lot of times that happens because I'm being kind of pushy or we've just not done anything fun. Like we've just been academic academics and, you know, and I've taken the fun out of it. Um, and so like Heidi was saying, um, 
I kind of have to use it as a time to evaluate. Like I actually literally just threw out all of our curriculum a couple of weeks ago because I was like, like this is just, we were becoming a slave to the, to the lesson plans and our curriculum. And my son wanted to sit and camp on Benjamin Franklin for a month. And I'm like, no, we can't do that. Cause like next week it says, you know, Daniel Boone, we gotta go, go, go. And I kind of, he was like, mom, you know, I really miss when school used to be fun and you would do fun stuff with us. And so after I pulled the dagger out of my heart, um, I kind of sat down and said, okay, you know, let's reevaluate. Um, and I wanted to say, because I mentioned it in the room, that I kind of, this is my third year homeschooling, and my joke is that I kind of I feel like I've been burnt out since I started, and I think that that kind of becomes, it's a part of being new, because you don't really know what's going to work and what's not going to work, and you're kind of trying to feel things out. And for me, new this year, I added in another student, my little guy, decided to pick up a book and start reading at four, and I went, oh, well, maybe we should include you in on, you know, lessons every now and then. So that one change has added, you know, stress and, and different dynamics as I've tried to figure out, you know, how do I, what can I combine to teach my five-year-old, my eight-year-olds, you know, what do I do separately? What do I do with the one that's not doing the schoolwork? You know, I'm working with the other one, and um, we're coming out of it now, but it has been it's been a rough couple of months since I've tried to kind of get my bearings and and figure things out and remember to be fun as well as educational with my boys. That's some great tips and that's kind of something I was thinking about today as as we did school. Um, I, I see over in the event room, Jimmy, Jimmy mentioned something about um, celebrating everyday, everyday successes. Uh, like I consider today a success because I managed to get through school uh, without anybody killing anybody or or me losing my mind. Um, but um, and we ended the day with something fun. Of course, it ended with the baby in the paint and then in the bathtub. But um, it, that's the kind of things that my kids remember. Like I don't think that they'll remember me being so quite so stressed out as long as I'm kind of taking a conscious effort. To do something enjoyable with school, it's not a, and like you said, it's not about being a slate of the lesson plan. I've given things up slowly out of our curriculum, kind of as the year has gone on, just because it just it didn't work for us, or it was making me miserable, or the children miserable. Um, I was glad Mary Ann mentioned grammar because <laughs> grammar is one of our our downfall. I have a daughter that reads phenomenally, but yeah, alphabetical order. Let me tell you, that is something that just like makes us both insane, and it's a it's a big fight. So like, why? It's kind of like, okay, why go there? We're just gonna do that later. Uh, I can't I can't do it right now. Uh, but I'm so glad. Um, I want to I I will come back to you actually in a minute, Latoya, because I want to talk to about talk to the that those of us that are married. I want to remind everybody. Well, last week we last week we had uh, getting dads involved in homeschooling. And I know most of us here on the panel had dads that are pretty involved. So I just wanted to throw out there too um, to communicate with your husband um, or your partner or whoever's your helper um, that this is not, uh, it's not a one woman show. Um, this is, you're going to need a lot of help from your, from your team. Um, that's kind of how I approach things at home with school is that, um, we're all in this. We're all in this together. It's going to have to get done, um, whether we do this at home or whether we look at the school bus and think, "Oof, I'd like to put my kids on that." But I think it's just. I think talking about it helps. Um, do you guys agree? I mean, do you, do you communicate with your husbands um, or or team members, whoever helps you out with homeschooling, um, about how you're feeling? I can answer that. Um, yes, my husband actually was the one who pointed out to me several years ago that my introverted personality needs time alone <laughs> and with eight kids. That's at a premium. So he often will come home um, at probably at least once a week and he'll tell the kids, mom is off. She can go do whatever she needs to do. She can shut the bedroom door. She can, you know, leave the house if she wants to, but don't ask her questions, don't, you know. So I, I remember um, one time he came home and he, he started counting and he didn't tell me what he was doing. He didn't say anything to any of us, but he just started quietly counting and 
we sat down to dinner and I thought, what is he doing? And he had been counting how many times kids had asked me a question in the time between he arrived home and we sat down for dinner. It was like 47 times. I mean, it's, it was ridiculous. And so, um, you know, just having somebody point that out, that there's all, that mom is like this magnet and there's just always this pull and kids are always needing something. Um, and that, that gets long and hard, you know, at the end of the day or the end of the week. So um, I am all for pulling in help and asking and asking for help. I think that's hard for a lot of us, especially as type A moms, to ask for help. But um, whenever you can do that, if you don't have a spouse, if there is somebody who you can say, could you, could you please give me an hour, you know, or something, um, do that. Ask for help. Absolutely. I love that I love that you interjected your wisdom there. I knew you I knew I knew that you had some great advice. Hey Marlene, I see a question um, from Jimmy over in the comment tracker. Um do you mind pulling that in and we'll we'll have the girls address that too. All right, yeah, we actually have quite a bit in the event room. Um, Let me pull in that awesome. question. Um Jimmy says, how do you know when to push through burnout and when to throw on the brakes? It's a great question. Ladies? <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'll take my turn. <laughs> um, I've hit burnout multiple times and I know I saw someone over in the event room talking about um, being a new mom, new homeschooling mom and hitting burnout. And um, when the kids were younger for me it was my first year homeschooling I had just had a baby and um, and I had two that you know I was dealing with at home to school and um, I knew when I wanted to sit down at lunchtime and eat nothing but peanut butter cups and ice cream that we were in trouble and um, <laughs> I was lucky enough to have a support system and my husband took a couple days off from work we kept the baby home with us and sent the other two off to my parents um, and took a very big deep breath and went okay something has to give um, now almost nine years later um, I think I experienced the burnout less than my teenager does um, you know entering into high school has been a difficult transition and um, there's two things that um, are an indicator to me when we are so far behind that it feels like it's going to take weeks and weeks to catch up um, it's definitely time to stop and figure out what the problem is and um, and see if we can you know evaluate and make it better um, and we've done that this year already you know we had to pull some pieces out take some things out realize that this is this is not working um, so that's a really big indicator for me and um, I have also pushed through things um, and I think for me it's kind of a gut instinct it's a are we all drowning or is this like my kid is just nah, I just don't want to do this and I'm kind of you know dragging my feet on it because I'm a firm believer that everything isn't always going to be fun sometimes there are things that you just have to do and um, and so we do push through things but when you feel like you're completely drowning or you are so far behind that you can't imagine how you're gonna catch up then I, I that for me that's the indicator that it's time to oh wow we need to stop and figure this out and uh, we've done that this year with our high school and, and just started pulling things out slowing the pace down with some things that were we were really getting behind on and saying wait a minute maybe it's not that we're behind maybe it's that we're trying to take too fast a pace you know it, it doesn't always have to be we're behind you know sometimes it's just this was a lot in a unit you know this particular unit or whatever and we needed more time on this and recognizing that and taking that time I would agree with Heidi um, knowing when it's time if it's just you or if it's just one child or if everybody just seems like they're getting ready to die um, I think that we kind of jumped into homeschooling um, kind of the, the bad way in that we didn't do it from the beginning I didn't want to be one of those moms and so when we finally decided to do it I had all six of my children already established. I had a nursing baby, a toddler, um, a child who I had to teach to read, kids in elementary school, and then I had this child in upper middle school. And that's how our homeschool journey began. So I felt like we were kind of starting 
just in the most stressful possible way. I mean, I felt like I was going to tear my hair out.